Now, if you were watching the Indian television station NDTV last night between 9 and 10 p.m., you would have seen an hour of this. It's a caption with the name of the film the station had wanted to air, but which it had been banned from doing. It's a BBC film, already shown here, directed by Leslie Udwin, about the gang rape and killing two years ago of a young woman on a bus in Delhi. The film has been incendiary in India because of remarks made in it by one of the convicted attackers, who blames the woman for the attack. Well, a little earlier, I spoke to Frida Pinto, most famous for her role in Slumdog Millionaire. She's also an ambassador for the global children's charity Plan International, which has a particular campaign, Because I'm a Girl, which aims to protect girls from violence and sex trafficking. I asked Ms Pinto how important this film is in the debate about Indian women and their place in society. When I watched the film, I was reminded of all those emotions that I went through in December 2012 when this incident took place. And I think the most important thing that came out of that experience in 2012 was the solidarity and the hope that you felt when, those, when the youth protests took place in Delhi and then spread like wildfire in Bombay, Calcutta, as well as overseas. And I think that message is very, very important in the film and, in my opinion, the most prominent as well which is why I think this film needs to be shown, and especially because we're really talking about changing mindsets. And the only way I think you can change mindsets is if you show people what you're up against in the first place. And that is what India's Daughter so beautifully does, because it's a documentary film. It's not fabricated. These are facts. These are words that came out of the lawyer's mouth and the rapist's mouth. And we're not making them up. But in no way has he been glorified. In fact, it's quite the opposite, because when you watch it, you're so angered and you're so deeply distressed by the situation that you want to do something about it. And I do really hope that in a democracy like India, we at least lift the ban and then leave it up to the people whether they want to watch it or not. Let's talk a little more about the role of women in India. Maybe just describe when you were growing up, you were born in Mumbai. What, what was the atmosphere mm -hmm. like for a young girl? I mean, were you able to walk the streets unharassed or was it different, worse than other countries you lived in? I, I never necessarily felt um, um, restriction from my family but there is no denying the fact that when you are a girl taking local transportation like trains and buses you do get pinched and grabbed and pushed um, they call this this as Eve teasing in India this is a term that was coined Eve teasing and unless and until we start facing the, 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 the grim reality and start talking about these mindsets that need to be changed we're not going to go anywhere. But maybe you can explain the paradox, because there are lots of strong women in India, and yet there is this completely different maybe. society, which is far more in the sort of Stone Age. This could really boil down to the deep-set cultural norms that still exist. In the documentary, there is um, this example that is given where, you know, a boy and a girl, a brother and sister born into a family, the boy gets given a full glass of milk, and the girl gets given a half a glass of milk, because the boy is meant to be stronger and he needs to grow taller and he is the preferred one. And I feel these unfortunate uh, messages that are sent out to children at a very, very early age make them grow in an environment where they almost feel like a girl's place is always going to be inferior amongst the family, in society, in community, and then hence the country. Um, and the boy grows up with the mindset that he is the superior one. Unless and until we bring all of these people together and help them learn the value of each other's sex, each other's role in society, we're not going to be able to see that, that paradox um, fade away anytime soon. Let me ask you just one interesting question, because you're spending a lot of time in the showbiz mm -hmm. world, time in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. And in terms of the objectification of women and their place, which is more challenged, Los Angeles or, or, or India, in your view? Both. Absolutely both. Let's take um, uh, the example of women not being paid the same as men for the same job. There is an objectification in that already, which is women are um, um, not as, they don't, they don't have enough value to a film or a project, and hence they don't need to be paid as much as a man. And I feel that exists in both cultures. It's not just in, in, a, in India. It absolutely exists in America. And for, a, for an advanced country or for a modern country or civilized country like America, it's pretty shameful. Mm. What one step would you like India to take to improve the situation? Mm -hmm. Education um, and a very different sort of education. Not just building schools, 
which is very important, not just helping access to education and access to quality education, not just making that possible. Probably in schools um, in rural India, uh, girls are not even allowed to go to school because um, at the age of 16, 17 or 18, they're going to get married. So the family view it as a burden to spend all this money on their education when eventually they're going to be married off and going to be confined to the kitchen in, in, their, in her husband's home. So I feel if, if the value of the boy and the girl is taught to them at that very young age that is right in school, that a full glass of milk to, for a boy means a full glass of milk for a girl, and as, as something as simple and basic as that, um, could really change mindsets. And I know it sounds so trivial and so silly, but messaging is so important. And such messaging is very much required. Frida Pinto, thanks so much for talking to us.